Well, good evening once again, my Mount Pisgah family and everyone who's joining us on this Wednesday. I'm so happy to be able to come to you and share with you uh, just a, a brief word of encouragement and uh, just to uh, enter your homes just for this moment in order to share with you briefly um, from God's Word. And if you have your Bibles, let's turn to uh, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And this is a very encouraging chapter. It, it's, um, it's a chapter where um, Paul is discussing his ministry. And at the end, in verse 16 and following, he gives some encouragement. And that is what I would like to share with you this evening, is uh, just a brief word of encouragement and uh, just to um, hopefully put um, things in perspective for us. We read in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 16, it says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Now, let's just stop right there and, and, and say how important it is not to lose heart. Um, of course, the idea here is one of encouragement, of uh, purpose, losing heart, of direction, of, uh, of having a sense of uh, control. Um, when we lose that, we often can say we lose heart. Um, losing heart can also be uh, a biblical euphemism, if you will, for sometimes some things that um, we don't talk about a lot but are a reality in, uh, for everyone today. Things like depression um, and um, related uh, uh, mental stress that is common that we, that we have an understanding of greater today. Uh, the Bible already understood those things and it, is, it comes with that encouragement. We don't lose heart. And I'm here to tell you today to not lose heart as well in whatever circumstances you may be in, and he gives the reason why. He, he, give, he gives a, um, a direction here. He says, We do not lose heart, but, though, but through our outer man, though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. You see, the key to not losing heart is to have the proper perspective on what is really happening in life. And we can often lose heart because of our own frailties, uh, our own uh, lack of ability, our own lack of confidence, or, or, or even as simply as our own lack of health, our youth, our um, strength of uh, body, strength of mind, we are in a constant state of decay. The outer man is decaying. This is the reality of sin. How do I know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God? Because all men and women decay and die. That is the reality of life. And the reality of life is we are all sinners. The wages of sin is death. And all men and women will one day pass away. And the decaying of our body, the decaying of our mental ability, the decaying of the strength that we have is simply the reality of the human existence. And it says here, uh, though our outer man is decaying, that reality is true, yet our inner man is is being renewed day by day. Paul can say that even though my body is decaying and it is feeling the effects of the fallen world in which we live, the inner man is being renewed every single day. From strength to strength, every single day is a little bit stronger, a little bit more um, wise, a little bit more focused, a little bit more understanding of the spiritual things of God, Paul can say, because he is being renewed every day. And here is the proper perspective that I want to convey to you, is that we will not lose heart 
not because we have any ability in ourselves. We obviously don't. And right now, the world is making sure we know we don't have any ability in ourselves. But instead, we are decaying as a result of our fallen nature, resulting of the sin nature that is inherent in all men and women and boys and girls everywhere. But what really matters is the inner man is being renewed, and that's the right perspective to have. The right perspective to have is the not to search after the fountain of youth or um, to search after um, any of those things. You know, uh, the Bible says, you know, what, how, what worry can we, what, how can worrying add one inch to our stature? It can't. We, we're, we're never going to be able to reverse that process. But see, here's where God comes in is God. You see, our bodies are what they are, but see, when you come to Christ, you are born again. And that new birth, the renewal of our bodies, the renewal of the inner man is the right perspective to have. Even though the outer man may be decaying, it is the inner man who is being renewed every day. And then in verse 17, he takes that principle and he applies it to everyday life where he says, for momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. And then again, the right perspective is what matters. The right perspective is key. And we can look through our lives, and let me say, I don't want to make light of what anyone may have to say as far as the life in which we may find ourselves in. Many of us, many people, many watching here today are living in a very difficult circumstance. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of difficulty, a lot of challenge in life that is a great weight to bear, more than I feel I could ever bear, uh, not without the grace of the Lord, um, when it comes to just all sorts of challenges and difficulties that are persistent through life, that are very difficult, that are, being, that are very troublesome, that there is basically no solution for in this lifetime. That is reality for many people. And Paul here is saying, whatever affliction we may have for us now is nothing compared to the glory that is beyond that is to come. Light, and we can look at the heavy weights of the difficulty that we have in our life and we can say whatever and how heavy it is, it is light compared to the glory that is to come. That is a right perspective. One thing I, I, I'm often, uh, I think I say a lot anyway, is will this decision, will this, this, this thing matter a hundred years from now? What choices in your life matter in a hundred years? In one hundred years, when we're all gone, when everyone we know is gone, what is truly going to matter? What decisions that we make now are going to matter a hundred years from now? And let me tell you, the light afflictions of today will pale in comparison to the glory that is beyond all comparison. And then verse 18, While we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Perspective matters. Perspective is where our eyes are fixed and the way we perceive the world around us. And we know artists use perspective in order to trick the eye into thinking that on a flat piece of paper or on a flat canvas, an object is in distant and far away, or it is at close at hand, or two different things are. But in reality, they're both drawn on a flat 
piece of paper. And the perspective is used in order to trick the eye, in order to see things in different ways than they should. And that's what we do to ourselves, is we trick our own visual eyesight, our own spiritual eyes, in order to see things that are far away when in fact they are near, or things that are near when in fact they are far away. We confuse our vision, and we put things in the wrong perspective, and we trick ourselves to thinking that things that are important don't really matter and are distant things, and things that are not important are important. And Paul brings that into perspective for us, not to lose heart, that even though we are decaying, we have our eyes upon what the outer man is, and our, on our and, and that is it, it, it. The inner man is what matters. It is the inner man who is being renewed, and it is the inner man that matters. And so, whatever light afflictions we have, that's that is simply that light affliction compared to the glory that is to come. And so, things that. We need to focus on not on the things we see, but on the things we can't see, on the things that are eternal, on the things that truly matter. So my, my question to you this evening, in a word of encouragement, is to be encouraged and not lose heart. And how can I not lose heart when so many things are being uh, seem to be falling apart around me and things are being taken away from me? How do I not lose heart? Here's how you don't lose heart. Have the right perspective on what truly matters. Have God's view of yourself. Have the Lord's view of this world. Have the Lord's view of life. And then we will no longer be tricked into the seeing the wrong things in the wrong perspective. But we will see things as how they are in the right perspective, in the right view and in the right ways as God does. And then the outer man's decay won't matter as much as the inner man's renewal. The light afflictions we suffer now won't matter as much compared to the glory that is to come. And we will care more about what God sees and not what we can see with our own eyes. So, don't lose heart. Focus your eyes upon what matters. I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much for joining us, my Mount Pisgah family. I want to say how much I love you. I miss you. I'm looking forward to the day coming soon where we're going to be able to come and be together and worship together again and be about the work of our church. Um, even though I hope the work of the church is continuing now, I'm looking forward to the day where we're going to be able to see each other again. We'll join join us tonight on for our prayer meeting at 7.30. Um, you'll find the information of how to access that through your Realm account. And if you have any uh, need to, um, you need help accessing that, please contact us and let us know. Thank you so much, and you have a great evening. Thank you for joining us online today. We hope you were inspired by today's message and pray you'll consider giving to our ministry. Remember to keep in touch and check out our social media. On behalf of Pastor Davis and the entire Mount Pisgah Baptist Church family, we invite you to join us again. Until then, stay safe and God bless you.